go. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our mastermind call here. It is uh, Thursday, the 25th, and I'm really excited. My name is Mary Beth Fleming. I'm a black diamond here with Perium, and I am excited to introduce who's Miss Christina Amon, who is an amazing crown in our company. And this woman is just such like a bright light and such a steward. To me, she is like the reflection of a tree that's beaming up to the sun because she's so grounded and she's such a strong leader, but she also has that visionary spirit and illuminating spirit of the sun. So Christina, I'm so happy to have you as my mentor in this company and um, we're all just really blessed to have your leadership. So thank you for leading the call today. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Mary. I love <clears throat> I love that image. I'm gonna keep that with me. Ah, uh, <laughs> we can all just feel our roots sink down and our beaming leaves and branches and flowers and fruits spreading out. Thank you so much for that introduction. I love you, Mary. I am so honored to walk this path with you and be partners. When Mary came into my business, it took the total pivot, which you're going to hear the story today, but it, it was the game changer. And you all might be like, you know, looking out, looking for your game changer. Well, Mary was mine and you're so full of integrity, consistent, just so predictable and rock solid in who you are and how you show up. Not that you're not human and have ebbs and flows of emotions, but the way you show up professionally has been a super inspiration for me. And I feel like all of this entire team. So Thank you so much, Mama, for being in this business with me and that introduction. I love you. Beautiful. Well, it's, it's Thursday, June 25th, and um, we are here on our Diamond Mind, Bliss Ohana Mastermind, and I'm really excited to walk you guys through some end of the month um, inspiration some stories, some tips and tools to put in your bag of tricks. So um, I wanted to start out with a little bit of my background and my story. So I have always been a change seeker, a change maker. I started my journey probably from way, way back before I can remember, but it's always been about how to grow, how to move, how to get out of the uncomfortable and strive for the next. And I've even had people say, you know, I remember back in my youth, somebody saying like, you're kind of my most difficult friend. I always feel like I'm needing to go for the next thing with you, but I love it. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a really interesting reflection. So I guess that's part of who I am and part of my journey is to always, and I've always known even as a child that we have an opportunity to create a better world than what I was born into. I just could feel it, I knew it, I knew I was here to be part of that change. Drop a one if that's you too, if you just have always known that we can do better and that we have the tools to do that and we're doing it. So yes, awesome, beautiful. There's some other folks in that category. I'm glad to be amongst kindred spirits here. Um, so what that path took me partly from my mom, who's been a justice warrior my whole life, took me into a lot of activism, a lot of marches and demonstrations as a, as a child, as a preteen, as a teen, um, a lot of activity in that way, just, you know, looking for how we can create change as a society. And what that took me to, you know, then when I was more on my own was continuing down that path, even spending the night in jail as part of, you know, being arrested for my own activism more than once, <laughs> standing up for the rights of other people who didn't have as much privilege and opportunity as I had. I just had always seen that as, as part of my role in life. Like if I can show up to help out, then I'm there. You know, that was just like, it was, it was never a question. So that, you know, took me down those paths. And when I was in college, I um, started to really look at like the systems that I was studying a lot of environmental science and, and, and doing a lot of social justice and seeing like, okay, these systems aren't, there's the, the equation doesn't pan out. Like I'm not seeing that we're going to be able to create the change within the system, that the system itself has to be dismantled and changed. But how do I do that? 
And I was looking for the answer so deeply. And that's when permaculture came to me as a solution, that this was a way that we could create brand new systems that were way more holistic. And I didn't grow up with holistic systems. So I was like, you know, some of you maybe grew up with all this. This is like me discovering it for the first time. And um, so, so that was part of what I was learning. And then also the education piece of like, okay, we need to like work with the youth and, and start to create the awareness, you know, as I was waking up, having my, you know, moments of like waking up for the first time, um, seeing like, well, how can we work within the system? So I ended up going into um, environmental education and becoming an outward bound leader. I was working with adjudicated and at risk youth down in Florida and Georgia and Alabama going on month long backpacking and canoe trips with kids like who had never been in nature before. I like toured the jails that some of them came from to join us. And it was, it was heavy. It was really deep. It was beautiful. It was everything. And at the end of those two years that I spent doing that, I was, um, I was kind of wrecked, <laughs> like just saw like the deepest, darkest parts of our society really face to face. Um, even just down to like the food, we were literally supported by food bank food. That's what I ate for two years. <laughs> wow. So after that, I discovered spirituality because I needed that healing. Like after that, I was just kind of, I like was kind of lost. I was like, whoa, <laughs> like I didn't necessarily found my solution. I found incredible connections and training and just discovering how to um, be a, it was the first, it was leadership training. It was how to work with people, how to talk with people, how to strive for the growing edge. You know, all of these things have been part of my, my, my journey ever since. Um, and then I saw through discovering Vipassana meditation and, and discovering this more healing spiritual path, like, okay, this is bringing me back to the permaculture. The permaculture system is showing me how we we all need places where people can come and unpack whatever is going on within us. That's what I was doing with the kids on the canoe trips. That's what so many of us are doing, just working through those ancestral patterns, working through those traumas, those blocks, those wounds, all of that stuff is needed. That's what That is what is needed. So that's why there's retreat centers and that's why the permaculture piece came back is, okay, great, let's have land, let's grow food, let's have, an, have a close to closed system where the food is being circulated to the people who are coming in and out of this place to do the healing, to do the celebrating, to do the education on a really conscious, you know, waking up level. Um, so I was seeing a way to, to bring it all to cultivating a piece of land to be that sanctuary. And so it just, it was clear. I was like, okay, great. I found my solution. Um, came to Hawaii by a, you know, stroke of brilliant blessing. Um, ended up meeting my husband. He had a very similar vision. And we started to go down that path. Like, of course, this is going to happen. We're, we're going to have this land and create this place for people to come and do all the necessary work that's, you know, that's so needed on so many levels. And, um, and then we started having children and and you know working so hard just to get every little piece of that you know like the pig fence and the road and the you know we like rushed to build this temp temporary home just to birth my first child on the land i like moved in there in this big storm and um we built you know the cheapest thing we could come up with, which was a greenhouse. And that was just going to be our temporary home till we built our, we had already planned out our whole home. We'd done our whole permaculture design um, and had the vision and really believed in it. Like I just saw, this is what we're doing with our life, but we didn't really, we didn't have the budget and we didn't know where that was coming from. But for years, I just trusted. I was like, well, yeah, this is happening. I know it. I can see it. It's happening. And then slowly that dream started to feel like a really stressful burden. <laughs> um, it we were having children more more expenses um and we didn't 
I really couldn't figure out how, how are we going to raise the funds? How are we going to do the development of the land? How are we going to raise our children? How are we going to take care of ourselves? Like it didn't all fit together. And so each thing was becoming neglected. The farm was becoming overgrown. We weren't nurturing our family relationships as we would have liked to. We were financially stressed, um, you know, having to put groceries away at the, at the, at the store because we didn't have enough to pay for them that week, you know, just, hard stuff, like not feeling like I ever had budget to pay for presents for people and just like giving away like my most precious altar items to, you know, just to have a gift for people. And so that was, you know, basically where we had come to. And, and most people at that point were like, okay, time to sell the land. Nice try. That was, it was a nice thought. And, you know, let's be realistic. Why don't you guys just like get a house, live a simple life. My husband had opened up this amazing business with his brother, which has been such a blessing to the community and was hoped to be an income stream. But as we know with brick and mortar business models, it's not necessarily going to provide this instant budget to develop land. So we were still in that bind and the suggestion was, you know, just let go of the vision and the land and be realistic. So if there's a great quote that says, if, um, if people aren't calling you crazy, you're probably not dreaming big enough. <laughs> so drop a two if people call you crazy and drop a three if people don't call you crazy and you feel like you need to dream bigger. I just want to kind of see where, where we're at here. So I can at least look back and say I must have been going on down the right path because people called us crazy. The pe like my dad was like, you guys are literally crazy to be doing what you're doing. Now, everything I'm explaining to you here, this, is, this was my why. So when, when everything had come to where I was just like, oh my gosh, like we don't have the solution and the only solution being proposed is to give up our dream, that wasn't an option for me because it wasn't me dreaming the dream, it was the dream dreaming me. Does that make sense? Drop a four if you feel that. Drop a four if you have a dream that's dreaming you and you almost don't have a choice. Like, of course I have a choice. And of course I'm like so connected. But that is when we talk about having a why that makes your business successful, that's the level it's at. Like I came into this with such a strong why that was dreaming me. Like it brought me to Perium. It was like, here. <laughs> I want to happen. So you go do this business. So, you know, it was like the land, like carrying me here and our, the idea of our family raising our quality of life, raising our connection together to be close, you know, have closer connections to, to release that financial stress that was getting in the way of just loving on each other, of just enjoying being on this earth of just enjoying being a family and, and a married couple. Drop a five if you can relate to that, that desire to just like release that financial burden that's getting in the way of just joy and living and things that should be our birthright, that are our birthright. So that's what I was calling in. And obviously I could have just given up the dream and we could have probably released a lot of financial stress, but that just wasn't it wasn't allowing me to, thank goodness. So I was calling in a major solution as are, as have so many people here, as are so many people out there calling in a major solution for their why. We don't know what it is. We don't know what their why is or what's driving them, what their deep yearning is, but it's there. And if it isn't there, they just haven't, you just haven't connected with it yet. But that doing that work is beautiful. I love supporting people to discover a deeper why, a more expanded why. Um, I often tell people on connect calls, like I could, if I had the entire budget of the entire planet, I would know how to spend it. I can see, we can always expand our whys to creating cleaner, you know, cleaner technology and vehicles to putting up permaculture sites all over the world to buying up all the land and preserving it as, you know, 
as nature conservancy places. Like it just goes on and on and on, just dismantling all these systems and empowering people. I read a quote recently that said, if we divided up all the wealth of the United States, um, each household would receive $700,000 annually. So if I was in control of the entire budget of the world, I definitely would create change, right? And I know that every single person here is in that boat. And that's what getting connected to our why can allow us to do, to empower us to be like, there is so much change that needs to happen. How can I show up and play a role in that? So that was, so that's, that's being so connected to a why that by the time Perium came, so I was just like, dear Lord universe, like send me a solution. Like I'm not ready to give up this dream, but there has to be a way, you know, and I didn't know. I was like, is it some investor coming? Is it some backer? Do I start a GoFundMe? That didn't really resonate. So that's when it came, you know, I prayed for it and it took me a while at all, all the blocks and resistances. Everybody else does usually <laughs> often. Um, but finally, when push came to shove and I couldn't ignore it any longer, I was like, I better take a look at this. So um, thankfully I took a look and I jumped in and I had that strong why I had, I didn't show up and I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable. I wasn't like, okay, do to do, you know, if this works out, that'll be great. Like I might've said that to myself on some, on some level, I probably said that because I didn't know, you know, we don't know. We, even if somebody says that to you, like, yeah, you know, I don't know if, Maybe if this works, we learn in this business to kind of read between the lines of what people are saying and just be open to that. There might be more behind that, not to, you know, pressure anything, but just to know that often we come in, we just don't understand fully what's available here or fully what we're capable of. That's what so much of it comes down to. So I might've said like, sure, I'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. But deep down, I was like, I need this to work because it's the first time a solution has been presented that sounds capable of funding this dream. So let me give it my all. Let me. And so I became coachable. I was like, great, show me what to do. I still had a lot of inner work to do, as we all do, like building belief in this, building belief in myself, like oh my gosh, like my friends aren't doing this. What are they thinking about me? And maybe I'm weird because they're not doing it, you know, like all the stuff. Like I've definitely gone through all the stuff. And every time we go through this stuff, it makes us stronger. It builds belief. Like those are opportunities to create stories of overcoming. And it's stories of overcoming that not only you know, rise us up into the next level and version of ourselves and the next step of leadership, but also they also are what attract people in. So it's the story. It's not coming in and being this perfect, polished, shiny person that attracts people to our business. It's having a story of overcoming, having been one place and doing the inner work to arrive at another place and then continuing to do that. So let me just check my notes here. All right. So, so I was motivated. I was like, I have hope for the first time in so long. I'm feeling hopeful about the, the trajectory of my life and I'm ready to like jump in and do this period thing and not feel like a failed farmer and a failed, you know, family life. I'm ready to like, find my my story of overcoming i'm ready to create a story of overcoming with this so drop a six if that's you if you're here to create a story of overcoming drop that in the comments um, because that's what we have here we have transformation tools we have a support container and community we have success stories success leaves clues we have role models we have one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching we have shoulders to cry on we have you know all the opportunities to, to try and fall and fail and make mistakes and all of that. We have all of that here. So we have everything we need to create a success story. And um, 
So in some ways I was lucky because I came in with a burning why. And if sometimes you're like, well, oh, this isn't working for me or I'm trying, I think I'm doing all the things I'm following, you know, get in there with your why, dig deeper, ask your mentor to, you know, hop on the phone and, 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 and uncover what's, what's even deeper there. So that's one thing and be coachable, you know, be willing, be humble, be willing to learn the systems. Don't be attached to trying to do it my way. You know, like the, all these things I, I was like right there in the same place of like trying to be creative, trying to be unique, trying to stand out, like rebelling against the system. And it's so much easier to just use the system. That's the leverage. That's the, where the residual income comes in. That's where you get to do the time saving. If, if your goal is to spend more time with yourself or your family or your friends or doing the hobbies you love, then you're going to want to follow these systems to make it a lot easier on yourself. Um, so, ah, literally saved my life. Somebody's writing in the comments. I totally feel that too. Um, beautiful. Creating stories of overcoming. I love it. So, um, yeah. So I want to talk about this concept of being uncomfortable. Um, it comes up <laughs> in transformation. We have opportunities to be uncomfortable. With the, from the day I started Perium, I was already uncomfortable. I got, did my connect call at late at night. My husband was asleep. When I discovered the price on the connect call, I was like, ooh, that's a little bit more than he and I had discussed spending. It was $1,000 back then to get a launch pack, not money we had. But I really like looked at this and I was like, well, if this is a business and if it says, if it really can do what it says it can do, then I would be taking it, I could take out a loan. and. I can, you know, make this as an investment and give it, a, give it my best shot. And I should be able to make this investment back. So I put it on the credit card <laughs> and then I woke up like, oh my gosh, I really have to prove this. Like, I really have to make this work. I mean, I was in, I had things at stake. So I started out uncomfortable, not only because I had a why that I was already uncomfortable in my life. Um, but I, I, I had that added thing. So being uncomfortable can be a great blessing. <laughs> this can be the fire that gets us to do what we need to do. So drop a seven if you have felt or feel uncomfortable in your life, if there are things that are coming up because of Perium that feel uncomfortable, these are clues. These are places that we can lean into and do the transformative work use your tools you know if you have a meditation practice you're going to want to use that here if you have a yoga practice if you dance if you serve in your community in some way and that's your outlet for for moving energy and and burning the fire of transformation you're going to want to use all those tools if you have ways of like disciplining yourself. Discipline has been huge for me in this business to stick with it because if it's uncomfortable and it's getting hot, the fire's getting hot, like it's really easy to just want to back out and step away. But I, I just early on had that guidance that, you know, if it feels uncomfortable now, again, you want to make sure that it's in alignment with your value system. We're not talking about compromising your core values. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. There is discomfort as far as like, Ooh, I could be doing this out of integrity. That's not the kind of discomfort I'm talking about. Right. You guys know what I'm, what I mean by that. Right. It's all about the kind of discomfort that's inviting you to grow in to the next best version of yourself. So those are opportunities to lean in. And that's a great study. Like, wait, is this uncomfortable because I'm being like, I'm, over, you know, I'm, I'm being pushy to, towards a friend or is this uncomfortable because I'm being invited to step into and grow into and develop fluency and expand my comfort zone 
into, I love that your future is calling you from outside your comfort zone. That's beautiful. Everything we want is on the other side of what makes us uncomfortable. Yeah. So that's the kind of discomfort I'm talking about. And we have to study that for ourselves. So for instance, when I started this, I had two small children at home homeschooling. I was all by myself all day long. Sometimes my husband would leave before we woke up. He would come home after we were asleep. Sometimes we didn't see him for days. Um, and I had an ideal of being a homeschooling mom. Um, and then as I became an entrepreneur, I was like, okay, this is super challenging. How do I balance this out? And I struggled with like, am I giving up my, am I compromising my values here? If I were to put my kids in school. And so I had to study that. And then I just, I, I started to expand. Like I leaned into that. Like, what would that feel like? My older child wanted to go to school. We live right next door to the school. It's a community school. It means that he would be having other adults in his life and other children. And that's more a model of a village. And that actually feels more natural than my ideals of homeschooling, which was a very isolated kind of redundant day-to-day -day experience of us just kind of being on top of each other in this one room house. Um, and I realized, okay, you know what? That's an ideal, but in reality, um, having more community and more interaction and me as an entrepreneur having those hours to work my business, that is actually sounding a lot more um, spacious and inviting. I wouldn't have come to that if I didn't lean into that discomfort because the, the, dis, the ideal was creating a block. It was like, no, 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 school bad, public school bad. Um, but I, but the leaning into the discomfort of it allowed me to expand and break it down and be like, you know what, nothing's perfect. So this is a great option right now. Let's do it. Um, and definitely made doing my business possible um, in a huge way. And then there, there's all kinds of other obstacles that come our way. I, I could have had every excuse in the book about how I didn't have any support at home. And I would look at Sarah, who is like my my North Star, my guiding light, and be like, well, look what she's done. I'm following her footsteps. I'm going to do what she's done, except that she has this husband at home who helps her out. And I would sometimes say, well, so therefore, I would tell myself, like, therefore, I cannot do what she's done. And that's why it's not happening for me yet. Because as, as, um, as my trajectory goes, as my story goes, I actually achieved diamond in, nine, in um, five months from when I began. I had some great momentum, came in kind of like a, like a fast start. We didn't have that back then. <clears throat> Actually not in my first month, but eventually kind of like was on a very um, wonderful trajectory. Everything was happening. I didn't really know what was happening. I didn't understand anything, but it was all going and flowing and happening. And I hit diamond and then boom. <clears throat> I uh, stayed at executive for almost two years after that. I never hit diamond again for almost two years. So that two year period, I know most people would be, would have quit. Most people who come into Perium and to network marketing and to this team would have quit in those two years. Um, but I stuck with it because for, for a number of reasons, my why, Sarah, <laughs> I was like, she's doing it. Um, I didn't have a plan B, you know, I didn't have like, oh, I'll just, you know, let my husband make the money or I'll just do this other job. Or I just, I didn't, I didn't see any way to leverage my time to be able to do anything near what this was saying. So I just kept sticking with it. I just never gave up. Um, the consistency piece and not giving up is key. Like I would hear people say that this, you will win at this game if you don't give up. So that means a couple of things. Obviously you can keep going through the motions for years and not advance. So there's that piece. There's the like not giving up because you're still showing up in the motions, the action steps. However, it has to be coupled with that mindset. And that was the piece that had to change for me 
during that time that I had to do. I had a lot of growth to do to catch up with the vision that I had for my life, the vision of who I saw myself becoming, but I had a lot of work to, to be, to actually be that person, to be that disciplined, to hold myself as accountable, to be, um, to have that much self-love and self-worth. Um, and, you know, I remember one time being on a Zoom, um, one of our larger team Zooms and another cross team leader said, if you feel stuck in your business, just take a lot of product, <laughs> something like that. I was like, wow, well, I feel stuck and I know how to place an order. And by the way, like ordering products every month was not always easy for me. Um, so if, if that's you, if you're like, gosh, just placing an order this month is challenging. Like I feel you, I get you. It becomes part of our why when we're in that place. Um, and it's an investment in our business. So this is, this is a powerful pivot for me too. When I just realized like, okay, I keep banging my head against the wall, trying to do these external things. Sometimes it's about just turning it inwards, investing in ourself and doing that, um, self-care, like giving to ourselves in that way. If you haven't done a transformation in a while, that's an incredible way to, to boost your business, to go in and give yourself that shift, that internal shift, um, to give yourself that extra juice, to lighten, to let go, to do some releasing of old stuff that's holding you up, um, to doing to doing our upcoming athletics transformation, which by the way, we're gonna go over some of that at the end of the call so that you can get more clarity, as well as our other container that we're rolling out. Um, so giving to myself in this in this way, and, and actually what, hearing her say that it was like giving me permission. Um, it was giving me permission to give to myself that something that I really hadn't been doing as I was struggling to get myself out of financial stress to another reality of abundance and ease. Giving myself permission was something I was still cultivating that habit. So if you can relate to that drop an eight, like, we have to do that inner work to give ourselves permission and to give to ourselves. And that can translate into the outer success that we're looking for, that we're trying to grasp at in these outer ways. Sometimes it actually comes from how we give to ourselves on the inner. So just check that with yourself. Just check like how much am I like trying to do all these things on the outside, but like, am I taking care of myself on the inside? Do I have a routine? Do you have a daily routine? Do you wake up and have a self-care practice? If you do, what is it? Like write it down, maybe drop in the comments what people do to, to make sure that, you are, that your cup is full. So, so that's, that's a key piece. Um, and we have this incredible opportunity coming up um, with either doing a group transformation as a group and or doing our athletes transformation, which if you haven't done that before and you want to take your business, your life, your relationships to the next level, um, it's amazing. It's amazing to give yourself and especially because we're doing it in a container and we have all this accountability and support. If you feel called to that, you know, lean into that, get excited about it. And it's going to be so much easier to invite that and promote that to other people when, you know, you, you're doing it yourself. So just see, is there something blocking you from giving to yourself? Is that something that's exciting to you um, to do and see what you can do to kind of like unlock that and, and open pathways for receiving, practice receiving, um, open those pathways for other people that you're sharing with. Um, yeah, so there's some great self-care practices in there. And then check in with yourself of which ones are non-negotiables. That's another thing too, as you're looking like, how do I manage my day? What practices are just, they're going to happen no matter what. You don't even have to worry that something else is going to get in the way of it. And which ones would you like to move into the non-negotiables category? So maybe drop in the comments. If you have a practice 
that you just wish you were doing every day, but it, it's not there yet, but you would like to move it into the non-negotiables category and just claim that right here in this space and, um, and watch it happen for yourself. Watch yourself make that really a practice. Okay, wake up earlier, swim, journaling. <clears throat> Beautiful. So what can happen when we choose to give to ourselves and we choose to have a transformation, when we choose to do an athlete's transformation, even if we choose to do a business transformation, if, even if we make a decision, I am going to hit this rank, whatever it takes. I am going to commit to this. It's non-negotiable. What happens when we make these decisions? By the way, I kind of titled this like a whatever it takes story because I've sort of been that way, but I also like have this like cringing feeling like, ah, oh, whatever it takes. Like, but it's that whole like whatever it takes within your value system, you know? I don't know if anybody else has that resistance to that, like whatever it takes. You hear Leslie Zan be like, whatever it takes goal. Um, and what it means is when you have a whatever it takes goal, you're so committed to it that when obstacles pop up, you're like, okay, all right, so I can't go that way, but I'll go around it or I'll go over it, I'll go under, you know, like you just know that you're going to get past, you just know you're going to get past that obstacle because you're doing whatever it takes to get to that goal within your value system. So I just wanted to clarify that because I had that hiccup around that whatever it takes concept. So when you have a whatever it takes goal, like maybe your goal is like, I just want to get abs for the first time in my adult life or my whole life, you know, maybe your goal is to hit a certain rank. Maybe your goal is to, I want to bring in my first brand partner. I want to bring in my first UBT, which is three brand partners in a week. I want to bring in a team. I want to, I want to have five people doing the transformation with me next month. Whatever your goal is, when you create a goal and you work in alignment with that goal, so showing up consistently and doing these things, and then you accomplish the goal, you have created a story. Even having a transformation before and after pictures, you've created a story. If you can create a story in your first month, first three months of your business, that is the single most powerful thing you can do to attract people into your business, to have a story. You're going to have your, your product story. You're going to have your business story. And if you didn't, if you already started your business a while ago and you didn't create a powerful story, create one now. So that's what's possible when these kinds of promotions are rolled out. This is like, there's, this is a wave. We talk about like, there's a wave coming. Okay, this is a good time to paddle. This whole container has been laid out. I just want to give a shout out to Erica Kloster, who's put so much time and energy into the athlete's transformation. We are so lucky to have this. Ashley Castro, who's been putting so much time and energy into these group transformations, and we'll be doing a call about that on Sunday. So if you have somebody who's like, yeah, the athlete's thing's not really my cup of tea, but like, I'm definitely feeling more of the cleanse. Like, great. We've, we've got it all. We've got you on everything. And um, and the third container that we have so many things to offer people, and this isn't necessarily a prospecting tool, but it's something that we can all get excited about and we can invite. Um, and, but it's just not, in, it's not really the same thing, but we as a business community are going to be, you know, and we're going to hear more about this again, a little bit later on, we're going to roll out this idea that we're creating a container to do some of the inner work of dismantling racism within ourselves, within our business community and and just be the change in that way no obligation it's free anybody's welcome to join you're gonna hear the details but with all of these things we have an opportunity to create a powerful story thanks Ashley love you and when we have that story that's what attracts people in so before and after pictures let's talk about those for a minute drop a nine if you're like Oh my gosh, I will never post a before and after picture on social media. Drop a 10 if you're like, oh my gosh, that's terrifying, but I'm doing it anyway. And drop an 11 if you're like, woohoo, yeah, before and after pictures, I'm all about it. <laughs> 
Okay, cool. So some people are all about it. Yeah, Thomas, Jamie, I think was up there. Sirka, awesome. I was super uncomfortable with that concept. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to be that cheesy network marketer in a bikini on social media. I've never even been using social media for anything personal, but you heard my story. I had a burning why and I was like, tell me what to do. I'll do it. So I did my before and after pictures and I can tell you, I had a whole wave of people sign up because of that one post. I remember going to a festival actually on this island the day I posted that and I was just like oh my goodness like I am going not and not only did I just go public but I am literally putting my I'm going into public with all these people who probably maybe saw it see it um every single one of the next four brand partners who joined my team that month were at that festival so <laughs> I was scared, but it had an impact. And I remember going to, um, I remember going to a, par a birthday party soon after that as well, like that same week. And people were just like, I can't believe you posted bikini pictures. Like, whoa. And, you know, and, and one person was like, okay, just sit me down, like explain this whole Perium thing to me. I am so shocked that you did that that I need to hear about this. Like, just, okay, just, just sit, just give it all to me right now. I just want to hear it. Like, that's what if, so if you are like a, oh my gosh, I'm not that person. Um, and you do it anyway, that has a very powerful impact. It's not even so much about like, how much weight did you lose? Or, you know, da, 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 da. it's not that it's like you showing up and being committed enough to this message that you carry a gift that people are praying for that you're willing to do this, that this is so much more about weight loss. This is about inflammation. This is about toxins. This is about people's lives being saved, that you're willing to show up in this way. That has a very powerful ripple effect. So um, I don't know if uh, Kiki is on here, but she just did a before and after picture because she was like, all right, this sounds crazy, but Sarah told me to do it. And she had like 66 comments and like over a hundred likes and, you know, is like having a hard time keeping up with all of the responses um, because of it. And that's what can happen. You know, it sounds crazy. It sounds like not who we are, but here's the thing. It's not who we were. We are stepping into, we are expanding into something that is so resilient that we can show up for this even in the face of everybody else's doubts and judgments, whether it's on social media, whether it's our friends, whether people, it's people who just don't get it and are like, what are you doing? You drink the Kool-Aid, like, oh my goodness. When we show up anyway, and I could have caved a million times for all the friends who I just could feel them like, judging me and maybe it was my own you know imagination but either way i could have caved a million times <laughs> and because i didn't because i stuck through those two years i wasn't even ranking and my husband's like you're going to another event why like this is not happening for you can't you see it it's not happening for you um and here i was here i am now hit double rank to crown I never even heard of anyone double ranking to crown. It, it's probably happened, but I never heard of that before. We hadn't had a crown. Well, somebody hit crown the month before, but nobody had hit crown for three years in this company. And now five of us hit crown. So there's definitely momentum happening. And thank goodness we all stuck through it. For everybody here who's stuck with this years without ranking like huge shout out to you and if that's you drop a 12 in the comments i want to see who those resilient consistent determined persevering people are maybe it's just me i don't see any 12s here we go sirka's there uvia uvia just hit diamond for that perseverance yeah it does pay off so um i want to bring on a couple of amazing women here 
Um, first, I'm going to bring on Rita Fleming, who is one of my amazing teammates, who has been part of Mary's team, who has really been the team that finally, after those 19 or 21 months of being executive, when Mary joined my team and brought in her wave of professionalism, um, you know, determination, discipline, joy, all of the things that Mary has brought in, it, um, it, it, you know, it like, it was like the pride, the crowbar that pried the rock out of my stagnancy. And, um, and I've been in growth ever since, thanks to Mary. And then all the other parts of my team started growing because I was growing. So I had to rise up for that. So Rita's part, Rita and Mary are sisters. Rita's part of Mary's team. And I would love to bring you on here. Um, this amazing double ranked blue diamond last month and has become such a powerful team leader. And I'd love to hear from you a little bit on how hitting our goals. Um, actually, I forget which topic you're sure. <laughs> I'll just pass it over to you, Rita. It's going to be amazing. I love you. Hi. Thanks, Christina. This call has been amazing. And I just love your story and all your sharing and grateful to be here. And I'm going to share a little bit about leveraging cleanses at the end of the month and how powerful this can be for your business. Um, so Christina mentioned a bit about the athletes transformation. It's powerful. It's amazing. So if you're not part of the Facebook group, it's just the, um, athlete transformation on Facebook, connect to your upline if you don't know it, but that has all of the information that you need in there. And you can start sharing and, you know, sharing your own story, sharing your, your, your personal transformation, saying that you're co-hosting a group. I mean, we're all in this together, you know, and doing this together. So it's going to be really fun and exciting. And the sign, if people order by the 30th, they'll get their products by the beginning of, or by next month, we're starting on the 5th of July officially. So yeah, it's a wonderful opportunity to really grow your business and really help people to transform. And I'm just super looking forward to this transformation because I've been wanting to do an athlete transformation for a little while. And um, super inspired and passionate about that subject. And so again, if, if you don't want to do the athlete transformation, you can do the cleanse. But um, yeah, just inviting people. I know Christina did an incredible call on it the other day. So you can also send out that replay to people that are interested in learning. Um, but yeah, doing cleanses and transformations. And we have this incredible container where you know, a lot of energy and excitement where people are from all walks of life are coming together, but we also have amazing leadership around it and container around it that's safe. So, so the link for the replay, ask your upline and we can get that to you. Um, it, it is posted. Um, you will be able to find it in your group. Um, so yeah, that's a great way is just start having authentic conversations and just start connecting with people and seeing what their goals are, seeing what their summer goals are, seeing what their health goals are, just seeing how we can be of service to people. And then also just having a ton of fun with it ourselves and challenging ourselves to step into our own next best version of us. So i um, really fun and excited for this container. Um, and yeah, just really powerful to share this at the end of the month. Um, and we'll be starting after the 4th of July, after all the wildness, um, so that people can really get on track um, starting on the 5th. Awesome. So Rita and Mary have had a lot of success running group transformations of really leveraging this, bringing in a ton of volume in two different ways. One, you're bringing in customers and you're hitting K clubs. So you're just like, all right, who wants to do a cleanse with me? Who wants to do a cleanse with me? Who wants to be part of this group cleanse? You know, just really promoting that, putting it in your stories, like Rita said, sharing. If you have before and after pictures, this is a time to bring those out of the closet and post them. Post it in our health support group, post it in the athlete's transformation page. If you've done an athlete's transformation, um, post it on your wall. 
and, and be surprised at what people do. So these ladies have had so much success bringing in that customer volume. And because the business is free right now with the products, it's really easy to bring in brand partners right now and hit the UBT. So you kind of have like two pathways you can really focus on of how you are running for your goal, right? It's the end of the month. So it's all about hitting these goals and you have these two pathways you can promote the customers or the brand partners. And there, of course, there's a lot of overlap because you can have that conversation with a customer of, Hey, by the way, there's this opportunity for you to get paid if you happen to tell anyone about this and they order. Do you want to have that option for free? Really easy conversation to have. So lots of success these ladies have had with running transformations. Um, I wanted to mention a couple things about the athletes and then I'm going to pass it over to Mary. Um, we have another call on the 30th, on the last day of the month, it's going to be our, another live athletes call. In the, in the meantime, share the replay that Lauren, thank you, Lauren, just put in the comments here, or you can find it in all the other avenues on our threads and pages and stuff um, for people to learn more about how this works. But just to give you a really simplified version because we're kind of pioneering something new so like our brains our circuitry is having to adjust to like okay how does this work we are promoting for people to do core four nutrition with athletes products that is the that's the call to action is to combine them both that is very different than a 40-day athletes transformation pack that the company sells i don't actually personally promote that pack um, because I really value the gut cleansing aspects of the core for nutrition or the ultimate lifestyle transformation. Um, and I feel like the athletes products are best used before and after a workout, but we don't necessarily need to take them three times a day. So that's me. If you already have one of those packs and you're stoked on it, great. No worries. Obviously there's a reason they created it and you're going to let, you're going to tell your story and let us know about it. Um, but the call to action and what we're promoting to new people is get your core for nutrition or a ULT and your athletes products. Um, that's going to give you optimal performance, optimal recovery, optimal way of everything repairing and regenerating and, and being able to do its best. Now, some people might not, and those products need to be purchased from uh, June 21st through June 30th. Now, we're not going to go out there and promote all these different modifications on that because it's going to overwhelm people. The idea for new people is keep it super simple. Get a ULT and you can participate or get a core four with your athletes 10 day. The athletes 10 day is going to be spaced out over 30 days. Um, Get with your person who brought you to clarify any of this. I'm kind of just throwing out some simple. Um, yeah, we're not actually doing a 10-day transformation. It's enough athletes products to do one clump each workout if you do a workout every day. So if anybody here or anybody you know needs um, an exception to, to those two ways to qualify for the, for the contest, just reach up the line and, 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 and talk about it privately. We just want to keep it really simple in our promotional materials. Two ways to join the contest. So does everybody get that? Drop a 10 if you're like, yes, I get it. Let's just keep it really simple. Two ways to join the contest. Exceptions, talk privately. Great. Awesome. So that's that. Also, if people don't get these exact packs and they don't, you know, and they just want to like keep, they want to just have fun with it and post and be part of it, but not qualify for the contest. Great. You know, it's all good. This is all about just having fun posting and sharing, getting people used to that concept. And the internet is going to be flooded with our hashtag summer shine 2020 and booty bliss and all, people are going to be like, what is going on over there? Imperium, they're having way too much fun and getting way too ripped and having, you know, just like the time of their lives over there. Like I might need to lean in. We'll probably do this again. So um, anyway, that's contest. Yes. 
check with your upline. It's a contest. Cash prize giveaway for the best before and after pictures. Um, okay, and I'm going to pass it over to Mary to close us out. She's going to roll out an amazing offering as well as tell us about if you are running for a rank, drop a 15 in the comments if you are running for a rank i want to see who and drop us sorry i'm going to confuse you here drop a 15 if you are a whatever it takes i am hitting my rank this month and um let us know if, if you want to let us know what that rank is and mary's going to tell us about how the easiest way to hit a rank is to help other people hit their rank so take it away. Amazing. Mary, I love you. Hi, thank you, Christina. And thank you for this call. I've loved your story and the talk about growth edge and transformations are a really great opportunity to kind of move into that growth edge. And so is the end of the month. And when she says the best way to rank is to help others rank, that is a hundred percent true. And like my biggest passion of this business is rising myself but doing it through helping others to rise as well and when you tap into that aspect of our system that's when you can have true sustainability in your business so whether it's someone trying to rank consultant for the first time director for the first time re-rank executive or head up into the diamonds every single rank counts and it creates this trickle of enthusiasm throughout your entire team so my biggest advice at the end of the month is use this transformation to create those ranks within your team. Even if you only have one other person, get in touch with them. If you have 15 other people on your team, reach out to every single person and ask them, hey, how are you doing? What are your end of the month goals? We still have five and a half days. There's so much that can happen in this business in five and a half days, especially with leveraging a transformation. And just know, try to get understand what every single person on your team is aiming for whether it's consultant whether it's director maybe they're unsure but they would like to know what it would look like to rank and if you get those yeses from people the thing that you can do is connect them up with your upline and that's the beauty of our structure is we have this team and we grow together and we rise together so if you have people on your team that are really close to ranking or wanting to learn how to rank connect them with your upline and as a team we will help you to make that it creates a trickle effect up into your whole business and so then the directors come and then the executives come and so forth and so on and really my true passion in this business is yeah it's awesome when I rank and hit another rank but what is more exciting to me is when I see my team hitting their goals because it's like wow I'm putting forth the leadership that is allowing other people to grow. And that's the beauty. It's not just like, oh, I'm doing all this and I'm ranking. It's we're all in it together. We're doing, we're making the world a better place together with every single transformation we sell. So if, if ranking is something that you would like to achieve this month, whether it's consultant, director, like I said, the first thing you should do is get in touch with your, your immediate upline and then get connected into your, your upline team so that we can really set forth some strong goals for you, help you leverage this end of the month transformation and just create that end of the month momentum. Because if you end the month strong and you end the month hitting a rank or getting really close to a rank, at least you tried and at least you went for it. And that energy is going to build into the next month and it only creates more and more excitement and motivation around your business. Um, when I first hit director, actually, I was, I think I was like 2000 points away, like two days before the end of the month. And um, I, I was like, how in the heck am I going to get 2000 points in like two days when I've spent the whole month just trying to get 500 points. And I happened to listen to a call with Leslie Zan on it. And she basically just said like, you can do this. Like the only limiting factor is yourself. And if you just want to step out of your own way and plug into the system, plug into your uplines, claim your goal, you can absolutely do this. And she, I just get chills when I think about it because there's something about what she was saying. It just hit me. And I'm like, yeah, why am I limiting myself? Like I might as well at least try. And I hit director and 
and you know, I got those couple thousand points in the last couple of days and it really allowed me to see what I was capable of. And that's what this business is beautiful about is we, our leaders help us see how capable we are in the system and plugging into these types of transformations allows us to see, wow, there is so much capability within the system, within ourselves, within our teams. And it's really about just getting out of your own way and claiming it and going for it and fumbling along the way and just continuing to have fun and be joyful in the process. So that's my advice. Go for the next rank, no matter where you're at. Plug in with your upline and get connected into the energy and the momentum of the end of the month because it can be really exciting and energetic and fun. So thank you, Christina. Do you want me to touch on? Okay. And then the last thing, I know we're at the top of the hour, but myself and Christina and Sarah and Rita and Ashley, we are actually creating a container um, for anybody that really wants to actively work on dismantling racism and be in the anti-racism movement. Um, it, it's separate from Perium, but we are inviting all of our Perium participants as well as others to join us. And starting July 2nd, we are going to be following a very um, like a workbook called Me and White Supremacy and just really diving into this work so that we can really um, dismantle any biases and prejudices that may be within ourselves, within our businesses, within our communities, and really start doing the work from ourselves and then trickle that out. So I feel it's really important to work, work to do um, not only within our businesses, but within you know, our immediate lives. And so that's something that we're creating as this container. And if you want to know more information about it, um, you can also check out the book, Me and White Supremacy. And check out the workbook that we'll be following. It's a 28 day program where you're doing different prompts each day to really start these conversations and start this process of deep reflection within each of us. Um, so we can really be a strong part of this movement and create the awareness around our own lives and our own community and our own businesses so that we can all step into action and be part of this movement as well. Because to me, social justice, food justice, social, um, racial justice, all this is really one big interwoven category and it's important that we're all educated on as many aspects as possible so if you're interested in that um, you can reach out to any of us myself ashley christina sarah or rita um, or your upline and they can get you the information of how you can join this container as well so have a happy end of the month Awesome. Thank you so much, Mary. Thanks for doing the work to put that together. You have so many amazing opportunities right now to integrate what's ever, everything that's going on in the world and how you want to show up for that, to invite your, yourself and your closest network and your outer community to level up with these transformations and this opportunity to dive in to running for a rank. And just like Mary said, whatever happens, between now and the end of the month, whether you hit the goal or not, you are gonna gain momentum, you're gonna plant seeds, you're gonna build confidence in yourself of sharing and developing fluency with this language of sharing Perium. You're gonna break through limiting beliefs and blocks and you will have more belief in what we have and in yourself. So all of those are treasures that are gonna lead you to your rank, whether it's this month or next, but it, it's all about what you do between now and the end of the month. And even when you hit your rank, continuing to keep in that momentum because this is a wave from now until the end of the month is a large wave you know, that ha we haven't had for a couple of weeks. Like we haven't had that kind of like running, exciting energy, the, these promotions to leverage. And so here it is, the wave's coming and we get this chance to paddle and it's super fun and we get to connect in with each other more and help each other and map it out and get clear on like, okay, I have this goal and it's going to be three packs and two of them can come from this person, one of them from this person. And then I'm there. And you know, it's just like getting in and having fun and being like, who is it? It's like an Easter egg hunt. Is it under this bush? Is it under that rock? Is it behind this tree? Is it up there? And just finding out like, who are the people praying for this? that are gonna come in and join your team this month and have their prayers answered and help you achieve your goal. It's a beautiful process. Thanks for everybody who came to this call. I love you. Let's continue to connect. And the um, 
I don't know if Mary said this, but Thursdays are going to be the day that we meet for that container. So thanks, Meredith. Love you all. Have a beautiful Thank day. You, Love you. Aloha.